Hello and welcome to this edition of the BoobTube Buddies podcast featuring our discussion of Netflix's Black Mirror, episode 2, entitled 15 Million Merits. I'm your host, Foxman, and I'm joined by my beautiful co-host and my wife, Bethany. What's going on, Bethany? Hey! <laughs> so, how are you doing? Are you excited to talk about this episode? I'm excited to talk about... Black Mirror singing in the dead of night. Oh my god. So this is like your recurring bit at the beginning of every episode, something different you're singing? I suppose. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, real quick, uh, just to get it out of the way, for those of you joining us for the first time, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Reddit, or on our website at boobtubebuddies.com. Uh, we will, anything that you guys send us, whether it's just thoughts on the episode or a discussion piece, uh, your opinion, whatever, um, we will get on air and we will shout you out for it. So send us what you got. And uh, so basically uh, this episode, we got two special guests. I have uh, a Redditor on this episode that I met through the Black Mirror subreddit. Uh, most of our interviews are going to be that. So uh, I got a quick bit with him there. And then we also have, uh, as always, Preacher Don't Preach by Mike, uh, which will be towards the back end. And uh, I guess that that's about it. This episode uh, is an hour and one minute long. Uh, Much longer than the first one. Uh, almost 20 full minutes longer, yes. And uh, before we get into it real quick, we have a little bit here summing it up in a tweet, uh, which is basically just where we try to sum up the entire episode, simply put, uh, in uh, under 144 characters. So without further ado, summing it up in a tweet. Oh, yeah, we're summing it up, so, so summing it up. Future. People run on treadmills for virtual currency. Boy meets girl, she becomes a cam girl. He loses it, becomes another brick in the wall. That's pretty good. That's not bad, right? Yeah, that's not too bad. Summon it up in a tweet. Very good. Shop, Very shop. concise. <laughs> okay, so let's get right into the episode. And um, it starts off... 15 million merits. 15 million merits, yes. Uh, and that's how many credits he has. I mean, it's, I guess, called okay. merits, but I'm probably going to end up saying credits or currency or VC, virtual currency, at some point throughout this episode. So just forgive me for <laughs> whatever Dork. thesaurus terms that I use for it. Um, but so, yeah, we have this guy sleeping in a small room. Actually, really cool the way, like, the alarm clock comes on. We have, like, the rooster crowing, and instead of hitting a snooze like normal, like, he's actually, like, swatting at it. It's really hard to convey and cover all the cool futuristic techie things. The sound, I mean, you could get really the special lost effects in describing were, them. Yes, the, the, the look of this episode it was, was really, yeah, it was beautiful and it was unique. Mm -hmm. um, and they really did a good job of fleshing out what this little, I, I don't know, bunker that they live in? Well, prison, I guess? I have thoughts on that later. Okay, so um, so anyway, well, yeah, we'll get to that. But, uh, but basically, we see his avatar, and he's got 15 million credits. Um, everything costs money. Uh, every bit of food that they get, the, uh, down to, like, the toothpaste, everything uh, takes up this currency. Uh, now, it only is a little bit and he can earn a lot more once he gets down to and this is what we find is like kind of the crux of the episode is you earn the currency by basically riding on these bikes like you're on a hamster wheel yeah I so they're powering something we we find the judge at some point i think says something to that effect and you kind of wonder that anyway as they're pedaling it but that's what they're doing they're they're generating power by doing this i did not know that Okay, yeah, that that's, that's what they're doing. So you just thought that they were that was just what they do? They just ride their bikes? <laughs> Part of the reason I didn't like this episode, I like this, this episode. Part of the reason it's not one of my favorites was I was like, what are they doing? I, I want to know, is this, a, is this a training facility? Is this punishment? Is this, what is this? Let me take this opportunity to say this is probably one of my top three favorite episodes. Oh, okay. Uh, I will say that there really seems to be like, uh, like a serious volatility in public opinion on different episodes. Like even That's in talking, so fun. yeah, even in talking with all the redditors on the Black Mirror subreddit, um, everybody really seems to have their own favorites. I will say San Junipero seems to. Uh, like be almost everybody's like in their top five. That's because that's the only feel good one. Yeah, it's it's just a beautiful episode though too. But this one for me is absolutely one of my favorites. And 
Part of that might be because it's the first episode that I watched where I was like truly in love with the show. Because I watched the first one, really liked it, thought this is nothing like anything I've seen on television. But then I watched this one and my mind was totally blown and I was just transported to this other world and it was just, I loved it. I didn't know that the second episode would be different. The story would be different than the first. Again, went into it blindly, <laughs> very blindly. Um, and I, at first I was like, oh, we're not, I'm not going to see what would happen. What's going to happen. Then I was so relieved and I yeah. loved it. I, it was so, it, it's so exciting every time to get a story wrapped up from beginning to end and a, a whole different vibe. And are I there any other, sh I'm sure that there are, but are there any other shows that jump out at you as being kind of like this? No, where nothing has ever been done like this. No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I know like American Horror Story does a different theme for each season. For each season. Mm -hmm. um, with little tie-ins. And there are little tie-ins in this one. Like, for example, the song that the girl sings that is actually our theme song. Which, by the way, shout out to Mothman, one of the other co-hosts here at BoobTube Buddies, who creates uh, audio engineer, whatever you call it, uh, all these different theme songs for us and does an awesome job of it. Uh, so, Yay, Mothman! Wow, that sounded really sarcastic. No, it's because I was busy thinking, and I can only think about one thing at a time. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> Do you think some people think a show like this where each episode and season is its own entity, kind of like lazy writing? Because it's, it, it's hard to make a story cohesive and continue and characters grow and have you engage in a in a story and have it evolve that i think that takes a lot of work do you think some people think of black mirror the writing is awesome but as well that's kind of easy to make a show like that because mm. i don't know maybe i never thought that personally um and honestly even good shows a lot of times you'll watch an episode where you're like the fuck was that like so boring uh there are just so many filler episodes like shows like right which, which is kind of is what i'm saying that i think it's harder to write a series sometimes but i don't really care about the the level of difficulty that the writer i just care about the finished product of and what i'm watching As I, a I, consumer, don't, yeah. I, I don't care about the process necessarily i mean uh, I'm intrigued by it, I guess, afterwards, but it doesn't really color or shade my opinion of whatever the content is. Um, Speaking of content, we find out... Wraith Babes. <laughs> Wraith Babes. Uh, uh, tell your story. You gotta tell the story about you oh watching my. this episode today. So it happened later on because... Okay, so you get little tidbits. You find out that um, they are constantly getting bombarded, these people that live at this power factory, I guess, with... Um, with commercials. Yeah, there's Wraith Babes, there's Hot Shot, there's Rolling Road, bother the one where outs. they're pranking the fat people. What bother, is it? Bother Outs. Bother Outs. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I missed that one. But uh, but yeah, so th th they got all the different things. And and to swipe through these to move them, it cost, costs merits. So they're, it's just a constant, constant. Because at first I was like, why is he watching porn in the bathroom? But no, <laughs> Wraith Babes is, is one of these channels and instantly porn, softcore porn. So I took my, I work from home. I took my lunch break to take my notes for, for this episode. My daughter was with my parents, the baby's at daycare. Um, so nobody at the house, you're here by yourself. I'm at, at work, house. it's just you. I have the AC pumping cause I'm sweating. So the, the volume is like as high as it can go. We live in Florida by the way. So yes, it's winter time, but it's not like anybody else would consider winter time. <laughs> and of course it's the scene where the wraith Babe's commercial is its longest and it's just and I hear the door open in comes grandma with the seven-year-old and I can't get the TV off I'm like Xbox pause Xbox pause nothing's pausing I'm panicking my mom and, and daughter are walking in and I just start yelling at them get out get out <laughs> she can't be in here my mom looks I'm sure she saw me watching porn on mm -hmm. the TV while I'm supposed to be working with a notebook. So she goes outside. Taking and... notes, watching a porno. <laughs> <laughs> so studious. Porno. Can you watch my kid so I can watch porn? Watch porn and take notes. It is, you know, for Adam and I later in the bedroom. Um, and so I, I finally <laughs> pause it and I hear her outside talking to my dad, who is also out, out there. Oh, Jesus And Christ. she says, we can't go in. She's watching something. <laughs> I just turned the TV off, because and, and they come in, 
we start talking and I'm trying to explain myself that it's for a podcast and that it's just, it, it was the one scene that she couldn't see. And then it comes on again, Wraith Babes. It's like, it's like I was in this episode. I don't know what was said, but the TV's back on and you're like, oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. And I'm just panicking and my 70 something year old parents and seven year old daughter just standing in the foyer while, while I'm some sexual deviant watching porn in the middle of the work day. Oh God, that is oh, it was awesome. Aw- it was awful. <laughs> and oh, I just went from that to, can I get you guys some honey baked ham? Yeah. I have some honey baked ham. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so. That's a call back to episode one. Honey baked ham. Oh, that's pretty good. That, that is pretty good. And also a little bit of a callback to- uh, American when, Horror Story. When, yeah, uh, and just for anybody who wasn't watching during that, uh, Bethany and Kristen, uh, who are the boob tube Bettys, uh, they were doing an American Horror Story podcast. They had the their separate theories about what they thought would happen in the season. Neither one came to fruition, and the bet that they had had uh, was that the loser, which ended up being both of them, had to eat a pig's tail on the last episode, which they fried up and did. We had it on like Facebook Live and stuff like that. Ugh. I tried a little bite of it afterwards because I was there, and it was disgusting. I'm and so they ate... tired of pigs. I don't want pigs in <laughs> yeah. any other thing we review. The honey baked ham is pretty good, though. The honey baked ham is delicious. It's very good. Thanks, Pops. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's get back into it. Basically, uh, we see a little bit about their lives here. First off, he is parked, like, his bike is next to Douche. this douchey <laughs> chud who is basically, uh, like, yelling at the poor janitors behind him the whole time. Well, and you, you find out the this slightly heavy set girl, uh, he calls her a lemon. And you're a lemon because if you can't cut it, if you're not clocking enough yeah. time, I guess, powering this power plant you get sent downstairs and become a janitor and have to wear this bright yellow outfit. And he's this, he's so terrible, like throwing trash at her. Like, yeah. Saying mean things. Saying really And then really the one things. guy that we see like, <gasps> <laughs> all right, will you talk for a second? I'm going to turn off that kid's toy that randomly popped on halfway through the episode. <laughs> oh, that's so creepy. Which one is it? Uh, let's, it's the puppy dog xylophone. Okay. Um, it, it, Later in the episode, the the, the douchebag guy had been heckling um, another heavy set person on an elliptical, and you find out later that he didn't cut it, and he he's a lemon too, and he he's a janitor. And, and not only that, he ends up uh, on what was that fat people show, the fat shaming show? Uh, round, bother outs. It, at the very end, he's on a bother outs episode, so he's like, and I don't know, maybe that so like, actually, are they fat shaming too? On this? Yes, but maybe that's not a. I because I was at first when I saw it, I was thinking, oh, that's quite the demotion. You know, he goes from bike rider earning money to shitty lemon janitor down to all the way to like being made fun of in front of everybody. But maybe for being on that show, he didn't have to live at the factory. Maybe he gets like the same living conditions that uh, the main guy Bing uh, Bing gets uh, towards the end. Yeah, I would be on bother outs. If I didn't have to live in that factory and and could live in a nice apartment, uh, yeah, for sure, no <laughs> doubt about it. So, Just for uh, a little extra whipped living cream space and a fire hose at me and have people laugh at me in my underwear all day long. And yeah, well, and honestly, I think that they're only probably recording it like a few days a week, maybe. You know, because like for example, Bing's is only two 30 thirty minute spots yep. a week. So, but that's good. I didn't. I, that's a good theory. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, what what ends up happening is a. Uh, uh, we see a little bit of Hot Shots, which is like uh, American Idol, right? Yeah. It's basically American or Amer- Idol. Like America's Got Talent. Yeah, you you got the shitty judges and people competing to win this spot. And, and, and the spot is you get out of the factory and yeah. you get to live a life of luxury. I, I mean, guess. it was really American Idol, even down to like the, the snarky, mean British guy. Well, I guess they're kind of all British. Um, but, but then you have the Paul Abdul type. And then you have the super raunchy Randy Jackson. I guess, yeah. I would call that guy Randy Jackson. <laughs> he, he, show me your titties. He, Let's be sure. Show me your titties. Yeah. And now I'm realizing that that probably seemed racist, what I said. Because I'm just simply boiling down people to the, their, their gender and the color of their skin. <laughs> so, um, sweet. I, I'm feeling great about that. Those weren't real characters either. Everyone else in this, like Bing, Abby... They're real characters, and those judges are, I mean, those are caricatures of popular media 
personalities that they completely ripped apart because you hate all three of them. Oh, yeah, for sure. None of them seem like they have redeeming qualities at all. Just, but yeah. They're all honestly really fueling a lot of what's going on in this world in terms of like subjugating the, the lazy, stupid, slobbering masses, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay, so, oh, and I, I just remembered one of the insults that the douchebag hurls at the lemon. He calls her a blubber knot. Aww. What a dick. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good name, but still really, really mean. Um, you do see in the community meal area this Mexa Asian girl. I don't know what she was. Good God, we are being super offensive. Can you not she, like I'm, boil her down to what her ethnicity is? A really cute girl who Mexa has been Asian. I don't. Who was eyeing <laughs> Bing? By the way, you haven't heard Bing say a word this entire episode. Oh yeah, no. Up until up until he meets Abby, right? right? And, and this this girl flirts with him and teaches him this trick to get an apple out of this machine, um, but he is not receptive to it. You don't really see him come alive till you're exactly right. He sees a pretty girl in the elevator, and we find out it's Abby. He's eyeing her when they're on the ellipticals, um, and he hears her sing singing in the bathroom. bathroom. I'm sorry, that wasn't good singing. No, it really wasn't. And honestly, uh, we'll we'll get to this scene up here. And no, uh, fuck it, let's talk about it now. Um, even when she sings the song, the song is a beautiful song. It's it like a moving, beautiful song. Obviously, we love it because there's no real theme song for this show. But I instantly told Mothman, "This is this is the song I want you to turn into." And it the appears theme. in later episodes. As yes, well. and it's just it's a gorgeous song. Her singing, though, he was absolutely right when he says, uh, the, like, you're an above average singer and we've already got plenty of really good singers. When she was singing during the competition, I'm waiting for the X's, like the red X's that the judges hit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because it was, I mean, it was sweet. It, it was it was a lovely song and she sang it very prettily. But, I mean, there was nothing on it that, that made me think, like, you could put her on any track and it would sound great. Well, don't tell Bing that, because Bing convinces her to audition, talks yeah. about how gorgeous her voice is, and that he, she thought it was 12 million merits. I really liked when he has the moment that's kind of like the moment that you had with your parents walking in, where he's talking yes. to her for the first time, and the Wraith Babe ad keeps coming on, and he's like trying to like frantically wave it off, <laughs> and then to the point where now he can't even make eye contact with her, and she's kind of laughing at him as he's like waving it away. It's so awkward. <laughs> yeah. And we also see here that it costs money even to dismiss the ads. Right, yeah, and I said that before. Oh, you did? Yeah, so I already said that. So pay say pay more attention to you? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I guess I'm saying that. Okay. Um, but anyway, so uh, essentially what happens, we, we get both their names. He introduces himself. He's Bing Madsen. She's Abby Kahn. And uh, he tells her, like, he's going to gift her the $12 million to get on the show, uh, someone with his brother having died. And this was the first time you hear a little bit of background of why they're there. You, I guess you turn 21 and you go to these places and it's kind of like going to university. Yeah. A little bit. Like, oh, this is where... It, I mean, do you just stay there the rest of your life? Um, I'm going to say no in the fact that the only older people that we saw at all were the hosts, right? Like the hosts of the show? Right, yeah. Everybody else is young. So I'm going to say that this is kind of like a do your duty for, like, you know, this is kind of like, and maybe in to this... To retirement? No, 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 not at all. No, I think that this is like... You do this, and uh, there's a million ways that it could be. Either you do this, and you know you're guaranteed a good job when you come out, or everybody has to do this, or military service. You know, like uh, it could. There's just a bunch of things, but it did seem it did seem like it was mandatory, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do wonder what happens when you're done with it. Obviously, uh, I I don't know. I don't know if Bing's situation. Like, with the glass and all that stuff. I don't know if he'd have gotten to that point if this was a temporary fix, though. I don't know. We don't know enough about the episode. But I did wonder all these things, actually. So, um, but, uh, so, anyway, he finds out it's actually $15 million. He buys it for her anyway. That was a cool moment. I like that, where he sends it. Her avatar gets it. She blows the kiss at him. and uh, Yeah, it was cute. Yeah, and... Um, and so, actually, I think that this would be a really yeah. good time to cut to uh, our interview, first off, 
with uh, with Mike, who is fr- I know that's going to be confusing because that's also our segment later with Mike for Preach Who Don't Preach. But the person I interviewed, his name is Mike, so we're going to cut to him, have a quick Audible ad, and then come right back in and talk about the episode. Perfect. All right, we'll see you guys in just a minute. Uh, enjoy the interview. Player three has entered the game. <laughs> All right, Foxman here, joined by Mike, who goes by the username Snap Crackle Pop on the subreddit Black Mirror, which is where we met, and uh, we're here to discuss the 15 million merits, and honestly, just Black Mirror as a whole. So how you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Excellent. Hey, thank you very much for joining me. I know it's a little bizarre having, you know, <laughs> just meet with somebody completely off the internet to discuss something on a podcast, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of the fun of the medium. Yeah, no, I really appreciate it. I love this show, and I love talking about it. Yeah, um, well, let me ask you right off the bat. Um, you had picked this episode out. What, what what was it about this episode that kind of jumps out at you? Is it one of your favorite ones? Yeah, this is definitely in my top three favorite episodes. What What would you say are, like, your other couple of favorites, then? Um, my favorite is definitely The Entire History of You. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, that one was phenomenal. It left me speechless. And then right next to that would probably be San Junipero, just like everyone else. I know. I I hate to be so cliche, but I think San Junipero might be my favorite. It's kind of funny because when I started that episode, like five, ten minutes into it, I looked over at my wife and I was like, I think this might be the first episode of Black Mirror I don't like. And then by the end of it, I was like, so blown away and just so completely moved by it that i was like okay well it's probably my favorite episode now (laughs) i know exactly what you mean yeah this one is in my top few favorites too i actually got to rewatch it today and my god it's good the uh the song from it that the that the girl abby sings is actually the song that we're going to be using uh as our theme my uh one of my co-hosts here at boob tube buddies basically does like this elevator music theme sort of thing where we uh where he takes like a a real song and then turns it into that and uh i just i love that freaking song so much yeah it's it's pretty good what would you say is uh is your least favorite episode uh honestly that's hard for me to say like i can't really say that there was an episode that made me feel like it didn't have good aspects about it yeah it didn't leave me shocked at all but if I had to choose which one I didn't like that much, honestly, I would probably say like Nosedive. Just for and the which, f- remind me which one's Nosedive. Um, that was the first episode, uh, season three. It was where. Yes. Okay. Yeah, everybody had the ratings. Yeah, and- it has it's Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I actually really like Nosedive. Uh, the episode that for whatever reason just. When it was done, I was blech. It wasn't totally into it. I did not love the Waldo one. And I also did not love the... The Waldo one, by the way, is where it's the, like the cartoon bear who's running yeah. for... Yeah, for whatever reason, that one didn't quite get me. And then the soldier one, um, you know, where where all of a sudden they're realizing that the, the people that they're fighting aren't actually these little monster things. It's kind of just this weird technology propaganda that's been put into their brains. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for whatever reason, that I mean, that one was good. It just, I don't know. It, it just didn't ring quite as profound as some of the others to me. Yeah, I can respect that. I understand. Um, so, throughout this episode here with 15 Million Merits, we saw all the channels, you know, that everyone's watching. Like, there's Wraith Babes and Hot Shot and Rolling <laughs> yeah. Road and the one where they're pranking the poor fat people. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, so if you were in, uh, like, this world, the 15 Million Merits world, and you were given a chance to have your own channel, let's say you went on to, to Hot Shot and they were, were going to give you your own channel, uh, what what would you do? What would it be? Uh, honestly, I'd probably... I don't know if I'd be able to because the episode doesn't really give you this much information, but theoretically i'd probably have it something along the lines of like a nature channel because okay that's legitimate i feel like that would kind of bring a sense of peace to the people because they're all trapped inside buildings and they're all surrounded by screens and artificial images 24 7 
Yeah, that that'd be a pretty good one. I thought that uh, I thought you were gonna say something about you know calling for revolution or something like that. Or I know talking ahead of time, you said you l- like music and uh, you, you like to kind of record a little bit here and there. Yeah. I was wondering if you were gonna be like doing like a Yo MTV raps or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh god, that would be funny. <laughs> um, man, so what what do you think was like the message behind this whole episode? I mean, it's obviously. Uh, it's a very specific type of world where everybody is i mean almost kind of imprisoned so what did you think that like they were going for when they made this one? Oh god honestly this one i felt like there was like one of the most deep meanings behind it just because it's so relatable to today and i could totally see where things are today that things could get to where that episode is one day. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of the beauty of Black Mirror as a whole, is that everything seems plausible if, if like, the future took a, just a slight 45-degree turn. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Well, anyway, Mike, I really appreciate you hopping on. Uh, Again, this is Mike, uh, the username Snap, Crackle, Pop. Uh, If you guys are on the Black Mirror subreddit, you're definitely going to end up seeing him on there. And also us. I mean, we're going to end up putting our episodes on there for for everybody to check out because, uh, and I don't know if I talked to you about this, Mike, but I literally have every single episode already booked here we are you're the first person i'm talking to i've already booked every single episode with other redditors wow (laughs) it was like a crazy response so uh so i'm yeah i'm I'm really excited so anyway thanks for uh uh popping my subreddit cherry that feels weird (laughs) i'm sorry i said that let's let's i mean that's a terrible note to go out on but anyway (laughs) thank you for joining us mike no thank you for having me i appreciate it player three has left the game. All right, and we're back. Uh, thank you guys very much for sticking around. Hope you guys enjoyed the interview and our sweet little Audible ad. Um, let's just jump right back into it. Yeah, so we see her at the, the audition process, he, waiting in a line, a huge line of people. She gets picked before them. They see how They seem she is. like they've been there a long time, too. In fact, because uh, he goes... Uh, later on, you know, to get back on there, we'll, we'll obviously get into that. Um, and that one girl is like either just getting on then, or she gets on later, or something. Oh, so poor she thing. was like obviously in there, like it seemed like months. Mm-hmm. So that sucks. <laughs> and she literally gets in right away, and Bing get, ends up getting in right away later because they're looking for an ethnic one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before she goes on stage, they give her compliance. Compliance, which no obviously choice. he grabs the cup at some point. Uh, yes. I mean, it, we don't see when, but I he has I think she it. just hands it to him when she's finished with it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, I would love me some compliance. Why? It looked like it made her feel great. <laughs> is, <laughs> I guess the beer is my compliance. Yeah, the beer is definitely your compliance. I would like to force you to have compliance. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, she does the thing. Uh, they don't think that she should be, they they like her singing, it was good, um, but they think that she'd do way better with her titties out. (laughs) Way better with her tits out. Yeah, so, uh... And the, the, the audience is starting to agree, because the judges keep talking about... Basically, whatever the judges do, the audience falls in line behind them. And she was already fuzzy, and there's all this peer pressure, and... So she says, I she ends up saying I suppose yes. so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a long scene. It goes into it, and it's actually pretty crushing, especially he's off stage, and, like, he tries to Bing. yell out to her, yeah, and he gets dragged off. So it's a really shitty scene. I mean, in terms of, like, I felt just awful for him and her afterwards. And not this instantaneous, but this sort of stuff happens all the time, especially with celebrities oh, where yeah. you have your line in the sand that you draw and it just changes and, and things it's not get even fuzzy just, with what you're willing to do. Not even willing- so much celebrities or pe- it's more like people trying to become celebrities. Like, you know, uh, an innocent girl from a small town in Oklahoma goes out to, you know, try to make her mark or something like that. And then ends up kind of washing out into like a casting couch type situation. Or in or in porn. Casting couch is a porn Oh, is that situation. what that means? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> I I thought that was a common reference. Maybe it wasn't. 
I thought a casting... I didn't know that. Casting couch is like a specific type of porn thing. Oh, okay. For what it's worth, I don't I don't like it. It seems to... You don't like porns with casting couches? I guess. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> it's a little exploitative. Anyway. It's very exploitative, actually. It that's just what goes this to is really show like. how this easily is we can couch. really can... How easily we can be persuaded to do something. Yeah. But in this situation, would you rather go on Wraith Bait? Like, you know, we're not together. You're just, you're her in this situation. Would you rather do that rather than go down to, uh, uh, you know, back into the slave labor camps? Can I have compliance all the time? She clearly does. I don't know. It depends how long I have to be on that elliptical machine. Okay, see, the fact that you're even that, like, yeah, maybe about it, I think the cup lines would get to you. I think you'd be a wraith no, babe. No, I wouldn't be a wraith babe. You would be a wraith babe. I, it's already been established. Let's move on from it. <sighs> I really want that nice apartment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You would you would get it. How long do I have to, like, am I good 30-minute segments twice a week? You, you would have to probably, it seemed like she was on there more than that. I think you'd probably have to be on there like 30 minutes, five days a week. You'd and have just to let some guy rub his thumb around my mouth? Sure. Uh, I think it's, she definitely no, was I know, getting sexed the up sex later. Up, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, All and right, yeah, I'm I, a wraith babe and you're a bang. I, yeah, I think that you probably, uh, like they probably wash out of there after however long. Like they're not going to have some roast beef wraith babe at, you know, 55, 60 years old who's been doing it for 30 years or something like that. Wraith babes. <laughs> Wraith babes. Um, so uh, that he is absolutely crushed. And um, I mean, basically, he's just laying down in bed playing with this little penguin. Speaking of crushed, he crushes the, the mirror TV screens. Oh, I was sure you were going to say like she's like getting her Poontang crushed or something. I was like, that is really. I don't know. That that was dirty. No, I keep trying to make these little segues. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, I jumped I, head a little. I fucked that up. Speaking of fucked up, that Poontang's getting fucked up. And poor Bing, he doesn't have enough merits to swish. Split. What is that word called? Swish. Yeah. Speaking of swishing, man, <laughs> some dude is swishing all up in that poony. <laughs> And it, when, <laughs> so the, his only escape, he has to uh, crack the screens. He gets this little shard of glass, and inspiration strikes. He sees the compliance, and you do you hear her just like having that same little clip of her having sex over and over again. He can't do background. anything about it. He's run out of currency. Oh, he cannot can stop you it, and he can't even close his eyes because then that's when the. Comes on. I can't believe I got that note out. No, uh, that was good. Yeah, thanks. Really good. Who are you, Mariah I, I Carey? Oh uh, no, I was gonna say I should go on Hot Shot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they'd be super impressed. I'd be a wraith baby. Yeah, wraith baby. I'd probably end up being on the the show where they're spraying people. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be a fluffer for the wraith wraith babes. Uh, that that'd be better than about anything else we've seen on TV at this point. <laughs> um, so uh, essentially, he decides like, uh, and we get a montage. We get like a take it to the limit. And he's going to be a dancer? I guess so, yeah. Oh, wait, no, that's... What is that? I don't know what that is. That was definitely Michael Jackson is what that was. <laughs> oh, right. Smooth Criminal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the beat does sound a little bit like Smooth Criminally, right? Yeah. I think I just suck at music, maybe. The music in this whole episode, I was going to say, too, is really good. Not just the song, yes. but all of the, the music is good. In her, the other, like the famous pop singer, like her Selma little Tulse. song is actually pretty good. How do you remember that? You didn't like that song? You were singing it when I got home from no, basketball. No, that, that crunch face was me about to sing the song and then I stopped myself. You can't remember it? No, I, I can remember it. Well, how's it go? I don't remember it. Uh, I believe in angels. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's good. I have a dream. Okay, ugh, okay. Yeah. Off to Wraith Babes for you. Um, so <laughs> anyway, he he pushes it. He you know, he's he's riding the thing, he's uh, eating people's gross leftovers and uh, only using one uh, virtual currency's worth of toothpaste I every wouldn't time. I not bother with the toothpaste. At all? No. I'm trying to save money. That's gross. One currency he 
Or literally in one pedal of the bike, he earns like five to ten. To each his own. Okay. I'm, I'm not about that decision, and I'm not supporting that. Uh, but <clears throat> anyway, he ends up uh, at the end of this little montage, uh, riding up to the elevator. He's got his golden ticket. He gets selected because he's a minority, really, is what happens. And he goes out there. And he starts doing his dance thing, and... Oh, it's so bad. He's not really much of a dancer. But the thing is, is, I mean, like, I say that, but, like, he's a better dancer than I am. But, uh, but he's not as good of a dancer as you are. Thank you. Yes. But his dance moves did remind me of dance moves you'd do. Yes. They yeah, did. where he does that weird thing where he throws his whole body Arms out. Arms out. Like... That's what you do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, you yeah. basically do, like, a waving starfish. I would be a star on Wraith Babes. Well, like they don't nothing dance on Wraith seen. Babes. I would be the dancing Wraith Babe. What? How would that even be? What you My do? Move what your dance? Starfish. No, your dance move. First off, starfish as a sexual thing is oh, used you're as a woman right? that no, as a oh. woman that just sits there and lays there. That's oh. a starfish. <laughs> so that's that would be your move on Wraith Babes. <laughs> Yeah, with after enough compliance, that would be my move. I, I <laughs> how do you, you know nothing about sex or porn all of a sudden? Like, what is happening here? <laughs> I mean, we just heard that you were watching it in the middle of the day when your parents walked in. I don't know, but I'm sort of proud of myself for not catching on to them. I feel like you're just pretending to be chased, and you know all. I this think stuff. we know who's disgusting in this relationship. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. But he does this speech. And I couldn't understand a word of what he was saying. Really? I thought that it was eloquent and beautiful. I mean, his accent was super cockney sounding, like, as he's getting upset. I thought the performance was amazing. The way that he expressed his rage, I thought the actor did an awesome, especially going from totally subdued in every other time, other than when we saw him pounding on the... It, like, the way that he emoted right here, I thought was amazing. I thought he did a tremendous job. Maybe... Maybe it's the message then. So, okay, so, like, this was the meat of the episode. If every yeah. episode has a moral, this is where it was given to you, which, to me, seemed a little on the nose. Yeah, it was on the nose, but, I mean, it was it was an explosive scene. I, I, I liked and it's it. Just not, it wasn't as subtle as as the previous episode. I, I, I liked it. I mean, I liked the episode. Okay, but basically he has the jagged glass on his neck. Yeah, and he just, it's all about, you know, that this is all fake. The everything here is fake, which obviously it is. And you're right. It, and we don't even necessarily need to talk about it. You're right. Because it is so on the nose that he just says it all. Like, it's all prepackaged and fake. And, uh, you know, we're working towards earning what? Like, a new avatar, or like a new shirt for our avatar that doesn't even really exist anyway. Like, none of it means anything. We're basically sitting here powering uh, on the bikes all day for you guys and we get nothing we have nothing to show for it it's all fake we're too numb for anything real fuck you fuck you fuck you what do you think about a segment twice <laughs> a week yeah 30 minutes uh, yeah the uh the, the I've way i've never that... seen passion like that well no because the judge is like that was without a doubt the most heartfelt thing i've seen on stage since hot shop began and everybody's cheering and like we all feel what you're saying, even me. I get where you're coming from, and I like your stuff. Authenticity is in woefully short supply. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you didn't like it. Are you looking at me like, stop droning on? No, I was just thinking that how, how he starts that, uh, however that speech began, was exactly what he said. It was. That that was, without a doubt. Probably. But <laughs> probably. Abby, without a doubt, probably. probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely his shtick. But they offer him a spot 30 times a week. Uh, he uh, No, 30, 30 times, times a week. week. <laughs> Successful. Slave labor. Really a downer. Um, but no, 30 minutes twice a week. And so we don't see his answer, but... We do see shots of his his bikes empty. Uh, we see the 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 girl who giving the terrible audition uh, and just you know kind of where I love they said uh, that she has the magnetism of a towel. Oh, <laughs> poor rude. thing. She was. I mean, they were right though. Yeah. They were totally right. But uh, we do, we see the girl on Wraith Babes again, and then we see Bing on his new show. He has the broken glass up to his throat, and you know, just talking about the whole thing. And then uh, he signs off, and he walks out into this beautiful, like crisp, clean, ornate 
uh, room that he now has. He doesn't puts, look thrilled. Doesn't look really happy with, no, he's, with his choice. He's sold out. But at the same time, he doesn't look like that sad. He just looks a little numb, like he did in the beginning. Don't you think it's a little fucked up that he convinced her, gave her the merits to be on the competition? No, you do it, do it, do it, do it. She was basically drugged, did it, and now stuck being a wraith babe. And that last video we see of her, does she... She looks just a wreck. Oh, she yeah. Looks she looks terrible. used up, like, drug addict-y. Yeah, so yeah. But she gets this awful life, and not that his is a great life, but oh, it, was, it was fucked up. Yeah, it was fucked up. I agree. And uh, and that's basically it. He's looking out on what I'm assuming is a fake wilderness. And he has that penguin statue. And he does. Yeah, well, yeah, he has the penguin statue. So, obviously, he can get some little personal effects. Yes. Which, I, did he choose the penguin statue because she gave him the little penguin paper origami? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's no way that that was just, that that just happened. Real quick, I think before we get into like just our thoughts on the episode, uh, I think we should throw to Mike for Preach or Don't Preach because he's he puts everything kind of succinctly there in talking about uh, essentially like what is the deeper meaning behind the episode. So real quick, uh, without further ado, here is Preach or Don't Preach. Preacher don't preach. And now, here's Mike. Hello, and welcome once again to Preacher Don't Preach. As always, well, second time I guess, so it's not quite always yet. But I'm your host, Mike. Um, and tonight, what we're going to be talking about is season one of Black Mirror once again, and this time, episode two, 15 million credits. What I've one of the stronger episodes of the entire series and probably the strongest episode of season one um, overall. A really beautiful looking episode, really well acted, I loved it, um, but I'm not here to talk about that stuff. Um, what this show um, particularly addressed for me is it examines the idea of selling out, you know, what's your, what's your price? Um, and uh, what's the tipping point where your principles and beliefs become secondary to other motivations? Like we see um, with Abby in, in the show, like her motivation is to get out of that hellhole where all you do is ride a bike. So she's willing to sacrifice herself, you know, basically, uh, you know, literally prostitute herself into the porn industry in order to get out of it. Um, and then later, you know, the the Bing <laughs> sacrifices his his integrity in order to get out of the same situation, you know, and, um, but, uh, you know, we, we have different motivations for wanting to sell out. And, and the truth is we all do it to a certain extent. I mean, we, we, let's be honest, um, whether it's for comfort, I mean, maybe you do a job you don't like because it pays more and you want to have a nicer house or a nicer car. Um, maybe you need to supply for your family better. So, you know, you do something that you wouldn't think you would normally do but you have other duties that you have to answer to it is selling out even though that the price seems noble it's all still selling out um the funny thing though is that we love to criticize others about it and, and like i said this show is a lot about examining yourself like looking at yourself honestly um and so you know we love to criticize others i i think of like ice cube right we we love to make fun of this guy because he used to do he used to be nwa man fuck the police and now he's doing are we there yet i mean i know it's a it's a cliche joke but there it is and, and you know another great example would be like johnny depp he used to do all these artistic movies and stuff like that and and now he does these blockbusters like public enemies that are just god awful I mean, so it happens all the time. Um, and it's easy for us to say, you know, shame on you and wag our finger at these people. Um, but, you know, it's kind of hard to argue the logic um, when, you know, the lines to see them, to, to buy the albums of the sellout musician or to see the movie of the sellout actor, you know, they're out the door, they're selling out. Every time you turn on the radio, that, sh that performer is on the radio, you know. So they're making millions and millions of dollars and, and we hold them um, you know, accountable for that. It's the strangest idea in the world. Um, but uh, the question for me overall with, the, with this week's episode is, is this. I mean, is it fair for us to judge the sellouts as being sellouts since we're the ones who are 
buying in. You know, we're, we're the ones lining up to get that new album, even though we hate that they sold out. You know, <laughs> Buck Cherry comes to mind. I'm sure people liked him beforehand, but the, the one album, uh, God, I can't remember the name of it, but you know which one I'm talking about, the, the one that they played ad nauseum on every rock and alt rock station in the country um that you know i'm crazy bitch that one <laughs> um, that you know we, we it's hard to argue with the results from selling out and we don't really know what their motivations are right and that that's a big thing with me like it, you can't be in their head you can't know why they're selling out and you don't know in that position if somebody said to you well you could keep making 30 grand a year you know doing what you want to do making the kind of music you want to make and you could play bowling alleys and you could stay true to yourself and nobody will ever know who you are except a small group of people who think you're the the greatest thing you know going because you are true to those roots um versus you know being the multi-millionaire i i, I Everybody would go for it. I just, I just don't know too many people out there who are living on the fringe who wouldn't take the opportunity to, to sell out. So, you know, when you, when you watch the episode, if you go back and watch it, just keep that in mind as you, as you watch. What would you do if you were in their shoes? Um, and, and also the dichotomy between how we view her because she's drugged up and probably because she's female and how we feel about him because... For her, she's selling out on her talent. She didn't actually want to be up there. You know, she seemed happy before. She was kind of forced into position. But with him, it's his integrity that he's selling out. Um, you know, and, and he's angry and raged. And I, it's it's an interesting thing how we feel about him at the end of the show. It's a little bit, he almost comes across as a little bit dirtier than the girl who sold herself into porn, doesn't he? Well, that's all I got for you this week. Um, once again, all as always, love to hear your feedback. Um, any of your thoughts and ideas are appreciated. You know how to reach us. Um, it's been my pleasure talking to you. And as always, remember, the unexamined show is not worth watching. Peace out, little buddy. All right, and we're back. And that's basically the episode. So overall, I know you kind of talked about it, but where does this one sit for you? Like scale of oh, one to I? ten, like the best episodes of ten, the worst is a one. Okay, so realistic on the okay. scale. Um, seven. Okay, for me this is like a nine. Okay. Yeah, I I really like this one. Um, any other like big thoughts that you want to get out? I liked that this episode had uh funnies that there was comedic relief, which desperately you need after the first episode, which there was no funny moments. No. This had a lot of little funny, funny things. I mean, I guess Rod Senseless was a little funny in the first one, right? I guess, yeah. But I mean, overall, it wasn't a funny episode. Whereas, no, this you're right. actually had a lot of tongue-in-cheek funny things. Yeah, right? and a lot of tender moments too. The first one just stressful. This one was more artsy. It was prettier to look at. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely, the music was good. This I think is the this one, one that one sold me received, on the series. And the, and as you had already said, that this one was received critically better. Than the first. Yeah, episode. the subreddit, uh, the Black Mirror subreddit, this was one of the ones that was highly requested. I, and I said this before, and I'm making myself sound like a dumb, dumb dingo, but I did have a lot of questions about the, the background of what is this place? Why are they doing this? What happens in the future? Whereas yeah. I didn't, I don't necessarily have those with the other episodes. I kind of go along with what's happening. I don't have a lot of that um, cognitive dissonance going on in the background, like, all right, wanting, Dr. Ford. Wanting more, more, you know, why is this? What is this? Um, but really good episode. I really like this episode. It is but a small price to pay for the dominion I should acquire. Is that a line from Westworld? Yeah. That's is that fine. the accent you do? for? Like, that's just your straight British accent for every man? I mean, when I do Dr. Ford, I do have a cadence a little more like this one. Okay. But when I do the one for the guy that okay, was Okay, it's a little more cognitive. It's, it's a little different. A little bit. Yeah. A little, right. little, little, little bit different. Okay, now I'm you Jermaine also, from... Yeah, you also sound like Jermaine from <laughs> Flight of the Concords now. Yeah. <laughs> Who is oh, yeah. not British. It's business time. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is the episode. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Again, uh, any social media site, all that dumb shit. I'm, I'm going to call it dumb shit because <laughs> it feels weird to talk about 
like Black Mirror, and then oh, hey, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, do that. And if we get enough votes, we'll fuck pigs. Yeah, nope. we already ate them. Nope, that's not happening. <laughs> um, but seriously though, if you guys have any thoughts on any episodes, uh, write in. It will get on air. We'll shout you out. Um, and that's pretty much it. Do you have anything else you want? Oh. Um, if you guys don't mind, and it only takes a minute uh, to go on either iTunes, Stitcher, or any one of those things, and leave a five-star review. It, People are trying to swipe through right now. Trying to use their merits to <laughs> it, swipe through. It really helps with the indexing. Uh, so if you guys like the show and don't mind, that would really help out. Bethany, if you don't mind, tie a bow on this bitch. See you next time, little buddies.